Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, unit 3, National Income and Price Determination. In this particular video, what we're going to be looking at in regards to the ASAD model is the long run self-adjustment. Okay, How the economy, if we leave it alone, can self-adjust in the long run. Okay, and What we mean by self-adjust is correct its way back to the LRAS, okay, to our full employment level of output. And I'm going to cut to the chase, kind of how, you know, what is the main thing we need to keep our eye on for how that takes place? It's right here in this little cloud. It's all about what wages do, okay? So when we talk about adjusting the economy, self-adjusting in the long run, it's all about what wages do, okay? So we want to keep our eye on wages. That's going to be the key. And if you watched the earlier video, you know wages shift the SRAS curve, okay? And not the AD curve. So that's kind of take, letting you know something right from the beginning. Hey, that self-adjustment in the long run, what's going to happen is the curve that's going to shift to bring us back to the long run is going to be the SRAS. Well, let's go take a look at it real quick. I've actually got two models, okay? Uh, and the first thing I want to do with these models is I want to show where that LRAS curve is anchored. Where is it anchored? 100% of the time, it is at full employment output, otherwise known as potential output, okay? And so I'm going to put YF in both, on both graphs. On this one up here, what I want to show is an economy that's in a recession, okay? That's producing less than full employment level of output. So if we're in a recession, okay, our intersection point between our SRAS curve and our AD curve is to the left of the LRAS curve. So put my E sub zero right there. And remember, that is the equilibrium. The equilibrium is where these two curves intersect. That's where we're always at. Now, these two curves can intersect on the LRAS, which they are by the end of this video going to do that. And when these two curves intersect on the LRAS, we call that our long run equilibrium. But no matter what, where they intersect is our equilibrium point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little dash line down and call that Y equilibrium. Remember, what is Y? Y is our real GDP. It is our national income, okay? And I'm kind of, in this video, really stressing real GDP equals national income to tie it back to the unit three title, all right? Uh, so this economy is in a recession. Now I want to show you an economy that's really booming, okay? And it's booming so much that it is actually producing more than the full employment level of output. So I'm going to draw an intersection of the SRAS and my AD curve to the right of the LRAS. I'll put an equilibrium because, once again, that intersection point is an equilibrium. Draw this down. YE, we are producing more than the full employment level of output. Technically speaking, we're producing more than our potential output, okay, which is a little bit weird. How can you produce more than your potential output? Um, and, and you can in this graph. A PPF, you can't, all right? So the PPF model, you can't produce more than the PPC. You can't produce outside the PPC. But in this graph, you can, but you can only do so in the short run. And so, and just by the way, how can an economy produce to the right of full employment level output in the short run? by dipping into the frictionally and structurally unemployed, okay? There's ways that we can get the frictionally unemployment rate to kind of decrease a little bit. It'll never get to zero, but decrease a little bit, okay? People try to quit. We can say, hey, don't quit. I'll give you a bonus if you stay. And there's other ways to reduce the frictional uh, in the short run. Uh, we can, the structural, we can hire people that don't have the skills and we can train them ourselves when we're really booming and we really want to produce more and we're really desperate for labor, okay? so. Just to let you know, in the short run, we can produce more than YF. All right, so we've got two different economies. Recession here, bus times, boom times here, all right? In both situations, the economy will self-adjust if we let the long run take place. If we just leave the economy alone, we don't intervene with monetary or fiscal policy, we just don't do anything, in both situations, the economy will adjust, okay? So how will it adjust eventually? Well, in the recession, what we have in this situation is we have cyclically unemployed people. And so what we're waiting for is for them to begin to accept a lower wage. Remember, it's all about what wages do, okay? This self-adjustment in the long run. So if we're over here, we're going to wait for these cyclical, cyclically unemployed people to accept a lower wage, all right? 
So wages will go down when we're in a recession, and I hope that that makes sense to you. And when wages go down, the cost of production is going to go down, and so the total production line, SRAS, is going to shift to the right. Let's go ahead and draw that shifting to the right. SRAS, 0, 1, E sub 1. That was the self-adjustment process. So one more time, we were in a recession. We had cyclically unemployed people. We needed them to go back to work. Okay, We needed them to accept lower wages. It might take a long time, but eventually, hopefully, they'll accept some lower wages. If we wait long enough, wages go down, cost of production goes down, the SRAS, the total production line, shifts right. We get an increase in total production at every price level because wages, again, are a cost of production. We don't shift AD at all. All right, and we're at our new E sub 1, we're at a long run equilibrium at YF. Now this one, the booming economy. Well, when we start dipping into the frictionally and the structurally unemployed, because there's no cyclically unemployed out there, okay, what the labor market is going to do is it's going to get what we call really, really tight, okay? Now, you don't have to think too much about that word. All I'm really trying to say is there's going to be, a, there's just a scarcity of workers out there. Like I said, there's no cyclically unemployed, and we're trying to dip into the frictional and the structural, and that's hard to do. So we just don't have very many workers out there, and businesses are trying to produce more. So what's going to happen to wages if we have what you might think of as a shortage of workers? Well, the price of labor is going to go up. Wages are going to go up. And when wages go up, hey, that's an increase in the cost of production. So our total production line, that's going to decrease. And what is a decrease? It's a shift left. S-R-A-S sub 1, sub 0, E sub 1. <coughs> Remember. It's all about what wages do. If we're booming, wages are going to go up. When wages go up, that's a cost of production going up. And that is the SRAS curve, the total production line shifting to the left. That is our self-adjustment in the long run. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.